All right, you guys, can you hear me again? All righty. Um, there are no questions about what we did in the first part of the lecture. First half, then um, the second half here, uh, we're going to be um, we're going to be moving on to creating these um, pads of um, uh, stochastic differential equations, diffusions. We're going to be looking at a number of different methods of doing that. Uh, some of them are simple, some of them are more complicated. I have three methods methods in mind. And um, okay, so so let's get started on that. Right, so Monte Carlo simulation. Simulation of paths of VSTEs. Um, so the um, the starting point is you have your your SD. This is the yt has to form a mu yt dt plus sigma yt dbt. And so, and you start out somewhere. So how should we go about doing this? Well, if you look at so the popular, the most popular uh, way of doing this is called the um, uh, the Euler uh, the Euler scheme. And this one we're going to be looking at first is called the explicit Euler scheme. And it says, okay, so you here T is running in continuous time, right? So it runs, that was a question. That was not a question, okay. So there were <clears throat> the other scheme, the explicit other scheme, T is running continuously. So what you do is you grid it out. You, you consider a grid, T from time zero, time one, time two, up to some uh, time, uh, capital N. And very often you will have you will have that um, the difference. This is just some delta, and this is not dependent upon. Uh, this is not dependent upon n. So then, what you do is we're going to use. We're going to use. We're going to use that b t uh, n plus one minus b t. And we're going to use it as a brown in motion. Right, so if this is a brown in motion, this increment here, this is going to be normally distributed with mean zero and then variance Tn plus one minus Tn. And this thing here, this was exactly my uh, delta, right? This here is the variance. So the explicit Euler scheme says, so you start with, so you start with y zero and get y one by, by the formula. So y one, y t one, y t one, you're going to get yt1 by uh, maybe I should write it up. So yt0, that's my y0. And then plus, and then there's going to be drift parts. And so here you have mu of y t zero and then delta t dt is going to become delta that was that constant 
And then over here, you're gonna have sigma over y t naught times bt one minus bt zero. Right, so this one here is given y naught and y t naught are the same because t naught is equal to zero. So we should write that. So you start out with y t naught being y zero, and then you get the next one according to this formula. And this one here, this one here, this is a this this you can sample. This is a sample from that normal distribution n zero delta. And so more generally, more generally given ytn, you get uh, ytn plus one by I want by setting uh, ytn plus one equal to ytn plus this function mu of ytn delta plus sigma ytn and then the Brownian motion increment btn plus one minus btn. So this will allow you to grow this this way. Uh, you can grow uh, a path a path of y uh, t zero y t one up to y t n. <clears throat> so one thing to note here, and this is this is a little bit of a warning. Given given y t n, you'll see here that the explicit Euler the explicit Euler. The explicit Euler, uh, uh, the explicit Euler method, it gives you um, so given y t n, it gives you that y t n plus one. Right, so this is what I mean when I say given y t n. This is standard normal, and you can see here that the mean, the mean is y t n plus mu y t n times delta. And then the variance, the variance is gonna be sigma y t n squared times the variance of the Brownian motion increment that was delta. Right, so you can see now that this goes back to one of the earlier questions about, not earlier questions, one of the earlier comments about um, simulation. Let me just bring up that slide again so we can tie it together. This comment here, we are talking about simulating paths right now, and it can be complicated to keep them positive. And why is it complicated to keep them positive? Well, because, because you have a Gaussian structure here. It's always Gaussian. If you are at a point Y, uh, ytn then the next value you get out from this uh, this method is going to be gaussian in distribution so it's going to be all over r so it can in particular go negative so ytn here 
So YTN can always go negative. And then that's a problem if you have, if if you have, for example, uh, the, uh, the square root process, right? So if even the, so, so for example, if you're doing the uh, the example with mu of a being the affine drift, the volatility is the square root beta, the square root of a. But in that case. And then we know that yt is always positive when kappa theta is positive. But when I'm looking at the uh, Euler pad, ytn plus one, um, this can be negative. Oh, yt. So you see there's a difference between the Euler method and what it produces of a path and then what the actual path looks like. So this is just something to be aware of. This here is the explicit Euler scheme. And then maybe we should look at a simulation of it. I took, uh, I took indeed, I took, I took this one here. Um, and let's look at a, a simulation of it. I'm hoping you guys can see my screen at this point. Okay, so it's um it's a very simple script. <clears throat> it's a very simple script. I uh, I have uh, ten time steps. So I broke I broke that interval from zero to one into m m steps m, and um. I start my process out at one. The y e e is for Euler here. That e I have right here. This is for Euler. So the uh, I start the process out at one, and then I'm looking at the Euler scheme. Uh, here is where I would have uh, kappa theta. Kappa theta in my simulation is just equal to one. I subtract away the y from the previous step times the uh, the difference, the time step. This is my delta one over m. And then I multiply on here with the square root, uh, the square root of the previous one, times the Brownian motion increment. Right, the Brownian motion increments. These are just uh, the uh, normals with mean zero, variance delta. Maybe you should just double check because there are some softwares that here put standard deviation. Let me just double check that MATLAB indeed puts uh, the variance. We can do that here. Let's just double check what goes in there. Yeah, so exactly, I got fooled. This is uh, the uh, the second entry is a sigma. It's not sigma squared. It generates a random number from the normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation sigma. So I got fooled when I wrote the code. This thing here has to be a square root. Okay. Uh, so then we grow the path and then I plot it. I plot it against time. Time is just. Um, uh, plotted on the x-axis, the interval is zero to one. Let's see if it runs. And here's a here's a plot of the uh, simulated Euler scheme for the uh, CIR uh, or the square root process, the fellow process. Okay, so the interval here is from. Uh, the process starts out at zero, it's uh, one, and then it runs like this. So if 
probably change maybe my indices are off a little bit. I think you should go here from zero. So now it doesn't like something. This is minus a delta. There we go. At at zero, it's equal to one, and then it runs out like this. And I can, of course, if I increase here the time step, I have ten time steps, um, so I can increase the um, mesh so it gets finer. And if I do that, I could move it up to say a hundred, and I'll get something that is more uh, wicked. And one thing you can see here is that the path that I'm looking at, this indeed is positive. It starts out at one, and it is positive. But if I were to, if I were to start start at say lower, to try to start it lower. Uh, so instead of ones here, I would have uh, say zero point one uh, as my initial value. Excuse me. So I'll start the process out at uh, 0 0.1 instead of starting it out at 1. And now we, well, we're lucky here, didn't go negative. Let's try it again. There's a little negative value here, but not much. I can lower it even more if I go down to 0 0.1. But now I'm just getting a bunch of positive paths. Here is a negative one again. Um, and you can see I'm also starting to get, I'm starting to get errors. And the reason I'm getting errors is because I'm taking the square root in here. And so when you take the square root of something that is negative, this becomes problematic. And this is what MATLAB doesn't like it. When you get these uh, red numbers, or these orange warnings, this is because there's something wrong. <laughs> And uh, and this is when you get when you get down below zero, taking the square root, you're going to get a negative number. You're going to get a complex number when you take the, the root of something negative. And you see the Euler scheme has a hard time doing that because there's nothing that prevents it from going negative. So this is the explicit Euler scheme, and uh, if I were to run it with the Ornstein Rudenberg process, this would never happen. This square root part here was going to be gone, and there's no restriction for it to be positive. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can try to apply this Euler scheme for this more for this uh, process as well, but you might run into problems. You will not see this if you just keep it positive. So we started up sufficiently high, then you were never going to see this issue. Never. You are likely not to see this issue. Okay. Are there any questions about this Euler scheme here applied to this square root process? You get this in this path that we're looking at here. The thing about positivity, this this is an issue that comes up, it comes up quite often. Uh, it comes up in Black Shoals too. So maybe we should talk a little bit about this. Uh, let me stop sharing and go back to uh, document camera. The issue of positivity comes up a lot. Now, In these models. So let me, let me try to write it also in Black Shoals. So in Black Shoals, so this is another example. And this is a geometric Brownian motion. And so geometric Brownian motion will have the form dyt. This is equal to a constant mu. 
and a volatility y, and you started out somewhere positive. And so again, you see that if if y t happened to be zero, well then then dy t dy t would be zero. So, so y stays up zero. So one also calls this, so zero is called a trap. If you ever get there, you're never gonna get out. Uh, zero is called a trap, right? So what it means is that if, if you have your process, this is my yt, it goes around, it ends up there, it's going to stay there. It's never going to come back out. Uh, fortunately, for the geometric rounding motion, uh, you never get to zero because the um, there's a solution. There's a solution of this SDE. So this is again like a guess and check like we had before. So let me just guess and check it. So yt, it's the initial value. So geometric, this is because you're gonna have multiplication. So this is an exponential. You have y minus one half sigma squared times t plus sigma bt. Like you solve it by moving all the y's to the one side, and this is the solution. And we can check, we can use E2. Use E2 uh, together with um, uh, with the function f of tx this is a y zero e to the mu minus one half sigma squared t plus sigma x. So then we need derivatives. If one, as before, is an exponential, so you're going to get f back. And now we compute with respect to t. This here is going to be the with respect to t is going to be mu minus one half sigma squared. F2 is going to be, well, it'll be the same as before. You're going to get F down. The root respect to X is going to give me a sigma. And F2, 2, this is going to be F sigma squared. And so if you have that, then uh, you apply Ito to compute DF, DF of uh, TBT. This is F1 DT plus F2 DBT plus one half uh, F22 two two, and then the credit variation of B. And we can do that. Plug in all these derivatives. First, you're going to get F1. We're going to put F outside a big set of parentheses. Then you'll have mu minus one half sigma squared dt. F2 is sigma dbt with the F outside plus one half. And then it's F22, that's F outside sigma squared. And then the of Brownian motion, Alice already pointed out, this is dt. And now we see that the sigmas they cancel out here in front of the dt terms and we left with f and then the mu dt plus the sigma dbt. So indeed we have that solution that we're looking for. This here's my y times mu dt plus sigma dbt. So you see, <coughs> If you were to use Euler, if you were to use Euler on a geometric bounding motion, 
what we could do is right. So, so we could use we could use Euler uh, on on y. We could use Euler on y t. So, if we want to use Euler on y t. Uh, then we'll have that y t n plus one. What would it be? It will be the previous point y t n. And then we need the drift mu y t n, and then we're going to get a delta plus, and then we'll have our sigma y t n, and then you have a boundary motion increment b t n plus one minus b t n. And again, this quantity here, this is standard normal, mean and variance being zero and delta, even though. Uh, MATLAB wants to put standard deviation here. I continue to write variance as the second entry. I've done that all my life. I can't change it. So we see that we see the problem that given given uh, YTN, what you have on the right hand side is going to be normally distributed, and it could go negative, even though even though YT here. This is obviously a strictly positive, a strictly positive process. So you see, there's a discrepancy here. This is Gaussian. There's no way this here is Gaussian. Like this is log normal. It's not. There's no way this. Yeah. So there is a discrepancy between the two, and um, and one trick to get around this. So one trick uh, to get around this is to consider um, is to consider say um, say xt what could we consider instead well here we have a nice if i were to take yt and divide it by y and take log i'll get something that is much better so if i could consider if i could consider uh, xt to be what i have inside the exponential so I'll consider this thing here to be, so this is a definition. So this is mu minus one half sigma squared t plus sigma dBt. What about that one? So this would give me, so, so that yt can be written as y0 e to the xt. <clears throat> Would that help? Well, now what we see is this thing here, this is really Gaussian, right? It has a drift. This here is Gaussian. This has a mean of uh, mu minus one half sigma squared times t, it has a variance of sigma squared times t. So instead of simulating y, what I propose to do is consider x, right? And then we can write, so we need the dynamics of x, dxt, this is gonna be uh, mu minus one half sigma squared uh, dt plus, and there should be no, like, this is a mistake of, there's no D on the left-hand side. There can be no D on the right-hand side, right? So there can be no D there. This D has to go away. There's no D there. There's no D there. There should be no D there either. So when I do D of X, T becomes a T. I'll have Sigma dBT. And then you can use Euler on X. Now use, use Euler on X xt right, so then you'll get that xt uh, n plus one is equal to xt n plus and then what we have will be a mu minus one half sigma squared times a delta plus sigma and then the rounding motion increment btn plus one minus btn So now we can simulate a path of X. So simulate a path of X and then convert 
and convert to y. Uh, by setting uh, y t n is equal to uh, repeat on y zero e to the x t n. And now this here is positive. Okay, because this is a potential, no matter what x is, this is going to be positive. Does that make sense to you guys? So maybe we should just try to code this up, see if we can get this to work in uh, MATLAB. We do an example in MATLAB with this trick here. You can do it in, in two stages and see and see how it, it fixes the problem. So let's share screen. And let's go over here. So we're going to build a new one. We're going to start out by trying to do this for the uh, geometric Brownian motion. <clears throat> so geometric Brownian motion, let's just pretend that um, that the initial point is a one. Let's pretend that um, this is a geometric Brownian motion with mu being say one and sigma being one. Okay, so how will we do that? We'll have the, um, uh, the previous point, okay. And then we'll have the mu, the mu was one. So we're gonna have uh, the previous point times mu, which was a one. And then we'll have the volatility that will be the previous value um, because sigma is equal to one times the Brownian motion increment. And that's the uh, standard Euler scheme for uh, for the new metric Brownian motion. And if we we have a look at the picture, how it will look like if we run it, we might get uh, negative values. This one here didn't do it. Um, we could run it a bunch of times. Maybe at some point we're gonna get something that is negative. Oh gosh, not anytime soon, huh? Negative, negative. Uh, doesn't wanna do it. Okay, so we're just gonna lower the initial value to something smaller, let's say 0 0.1 as before. So now the initial value is 0 0.1. It doesn't wanna do it still. Why are we so keen on not doing this? Come on, give me some negative values. <laughs> it just won't do it today. Ah. I don't know why it won't go to give me negative values. Normally you pop up all the time. Yeah, can't get it to do it. So this rounding motion increment here, this is <laughs> Normally it will do this much faster, but here it apparently doesn't like to do it. What happens if I increase the number of simulations? I don't know if you see these negative values there. Okay. Um, so the, the idea would be to show you guys that there would be a negative path, but it doesn't want to do it. Uh, 
what you would what one could then do instead is to switch it over and create the path of x. If you created the path of x, then um, I would want to do that. So you would grow the path of x. This is basically the logarithm. So the, the path of x would be you would have the previous value, and then you would have your mu minus one half sigma, that's equal to a half times the delta. And the volatility would be one times the rounding motion increment. So that would be your x. This is the log, log of geometric rounding motion. And then when you're done, you would convert it back. You would, you would write your, uh, your y as uh, initial value times the exponential of your uh, Euler path generated by x. Y zero here was this number we have up here. And you get this path out. So one way to get rid of the problem of simulating negative values, even though it didn't appear here, would be to apply the um, uh, to apply a transform. And then after you apply the transform, there is no restriction on whether or not the value is positive or, or negative. And um, if you switch over to the homework. The, um, the same issue is going to appear in um, this is homework number three. So the, the process that we're playing with here is this filler process, the square root process. And so there's a drift, the kappa times theta minus y is so what we have here. Kappa is equal to one and theta is equal to one. The beta is equal to one. and um, you're having this problem as you look at. So this one, we actually got to see that there are problems when you try to put in a negative value here for y. And here the proposal is, well, transform it using each of lemma, compute the dynamics of x, and transform it with this log, just as we did before. And then what you could do is um, you could simulate uh, whatever you get out of the dynamics of x. Uh, you can use the Euler scheme to grow paths of x and then convert back to y using the exponential function. Here was the uh, geometric rounding motion um, that we just looked at. The, uh, there's one here that's more complicated. This is the Brownian bridge. I don't think we're going to have time for the Brownian bridge today. We'll do it next time. Um, but this was the explicit Euler scheme. And if you want to maintain something like positivity, your process, you might have to apply a transform with a function first, and um, and then you simulate this new uh, this new process you get out by transforming with some function, typically log, and then you can revert back simply by inverting that function you you've been using. Are there any questions about this? This was the explicit Euler scheme. Or any questions or comments on the explicit order scheme? Or else we move on and do the, uh, the implicit order scheme. Okay, and let's have a look at the implicit order scheme. 81, 17, 18.
<clears throat> so the implicit Euler scheme So the implicit Euler scheme, uh, so when you wrote, when we wrote down uh, ytn plus one, we would have the previous value, but then instead, instead of evaluating here, this is basically just approximating Uh, Riemann integrals by uh, uh, by the right endpoint. Instead of the left. And so over here, before we would evaluate the function mu at the at the left end point, you could also evaluate it here at the right end point. Plus sigma ytn. Btn plus one minus Btn. So now this becomes implicit, and it becomes implicit because it becomes implicit because ytn appears on both sides. So you've got to solve, solve for ytn plus one. So if you look at an example, let's go back to that square root process. This is the one I've coded up. If you looked at ytn plus one being ytn, uh, and then my mu here would be, uh, what was it I had? chosen the kappa and the theta to be one. So this mu here would be uh, one minus uh, y t n plus one times delta plus, and then the square root of y t n and then the Brownian motion increment. So you now have to solve here. So we write this, this is the same, saying that y t n and then you remove it over on the other on the other side, so you get one plus uh, delta here. That this is equal to y t n plus delta plus square root of y t n, and then the Brownian motion increment. And then you divide over. And then you divide over. Oh, my computer is out of power. Hang on a second. I need a power plug. Give me a minute. Okay. All right. So you get this plugged in before the computer dies. Yep. So the the uh, when we had the explicit scheme, it was called explicit because you get YTN directly in terms of the right hand side. The implicit one, there's a little bit of work to be done. You'll have to find the solution uh, of YTN here. And so you can do this, and you in that particular scheme uh, that we were looking at uh, for the, um, in that particular process, if we're looking at the federal process, it's just slightly, slightly changed, right? Before you would just have a TN here. Now it looks a little bit different. And so if you go back and look at the code, let me share my screen again. If we go back and look at the code, <clears throat> so 
So if I go back and look at the code, so this is my YI, this is the implicit Euler scheme. And I want the implicit Euler scheme and the explicit Euler scheme for um, I want to compare them. So the top line, this is the explicit one we just had. And you can see here, I'm dividing over by one plus delta. And I call that YI. And I want to plot them next to each other. And let's do like uh, 10 points here. And let's see how it looks. And we get these two. I right, so the blue one. This is the um, the blue one. This is the uh, explicit, and the red one. This is the implicit. And of course, it changes as if I change the number of paths. The discrepancies they might grow. Uh, they might get smaller here. They're pretty close to each other. So those are the implicit and the explicit uh, Euler scheme for simulation. And you might wonder like, why would I ever use one over the other? Uh, reasons for choosing one and, and not choosing the other. Um, so, so later, later we will discuss, we will discuss uh, rate of convergence and stability. And we're going to do this here for ODEs, um, which means that we're only looking at, so there'll be no Brownian motion terms. We'll just look at, at the, um, at the DT terms. And, and when we do that, you will see that there, there might be good reasons for why one, we want to use the implicit over the explicit, but at this point, we're not making any any judgment on which of the two one should use. I'm just trying to get you guys exposed uh, to the various schemes. So later, this is going to be in a in a while. It, it'll not it will not be anytime soon. But you can do the homework without without like you just try to play with them, implement them, and look at the paths and see and get a feel for uh, what the different things do. Uh, which one are harder to work with, which one are easier to work with, that this is a pretty simple transform. And by using the implicit scheme, you typically gain stability. Uh, rate of convergence is, this is not going to change. This is, this is coming later in the next one. As you could see in my code, I had three, I had three schemes, um, I had three schemes uh, listed. Maybe we should just look at them together. There was a third, third line in my code here. Uh, that's the last one here. And you can see that's called M, which is the YM. And uh, if I plot all of them, <clears throat> and if you look at what the YM it does, it looks an awfully lot like the explicit Euler scheme. It looks the same all the way up to here, but there's this correction term here. There's like a correction term that's being added here. And it's the boundary motion squared minus delta, the time step. This term is being added. Okay, so this is y m. So now if we plot that one, there'll be three. There'll be three in there, and you can see uh, they're they're different. Um, but there's this extra correction term that comes in the m, uh, the last third uh, yellow path, and that that one is called the uh, Milstein scheme. So let me try to write down what the Milstein scheme is. So the Milstein scheme. So this is the uh, the Milstein uh, the Milstein uh, scheme. So again, we'll have D uh, dyt has this form uh, mu plus sigma. So what's the correction term that, 
that Milstein is putting in. Uh, Milstein says, so there are many, so a disclaimer, right? There are many, there are many Milstein schemes. And this is about a higher order, higher order of convergence. So this is speed, and right? this is what we're talking about. There are always two horses, right? On one hand, you have speed. There are two horses. On one hand, you have speed. And on the other hand, you have accuracy. Accuracy. And typically, these two goals, they are in conflict with each other. To obtain something that is fast, you typically lose accuracy. If you want to have something that's very accurate, you typically lose speed. Right, so you have the two horses that are running in opposite directions. And the Milstein schemes, they tend to favor uh, uh, convergence. So something that, uh, yeah, something that, that converges, but uh, like how well it converges, this, this, this is the question about, uh, this is what it has to do with accuracy. We will talk more about this uh, uh, when we get into these ODEs, but at least let me just write down the Milstein scheme. Uh, so now we're going to make the assumption. So, so assume, assume that sigma uh, is smooth. So it has a derivative. Then the then the Milstein scheme is about um, then the Milstein scheme says you take your y. And as before, it's the previous one. And then you do your mu, but you apply it to the previous one. You take your delta. And the same thing over here, this is going to be uh, sigma applied to the previous one. And then you ground in motion increment. So that's the standard Euler. And then the correction term comes in. The correction term says you're also going to do one half, then you're going to do B, or sigma, sorry. You're going to do sigma of YTN times sigma prime of YTN. And then you're going to be multiplying, you're going to be multiplying by this thing squared. And then you subtract away the mean of it. So that's the Milstein scheme. Okay, so this here is the this is the correction term. This is a correction term uh, to explicit oil. Huh? And what we just saw in the code was everything here applied to uh, the case where um, everything applied to the case where uh, we were looking at the square root process. You see here that the correction term only involves sigma. Only sigma matters, not mu. So if we do the square root, this is where we have sigma of a plus this beta root a. And so you compute the derivative, sigma prime of a, this would be uh, beta and then divided by two square root a. And then you combine the terms up here, you see what we will get. Uh, the correction term would be um, the correction terms would be, uh, so we get uh, one half sigma, sigma prime, that would be uh, one over four. Uh, sigma was beta root A and 
sigma prime, that will be beta squared divided by root a, this would be one over four, that beta squared. That will be the term in front, and then the body most increments minus the, uh, the expectation of that increment. And that was exactly what, what you saw in my code. This was the correction term. So we are out of time, but so next time, next time uh, uh, we'll derive uh, the Milstein scheme. Right. So for the Milstein scheme, only sigma matters. Uh, yeah, I think this might be a good place to, to stop. Are there any questions before we call it quits? You guys are very quiet <laughs> and that's okay no problem but um if there are questions um you can use my office hours tomorrow morning at uh, at nine o'clock uh, otherwise i will see you uh, next week next week we'll talk about uh, uh, we'll talk about the stuff we have here but we'll also talk about those projects uh, that are due at the end at the end of class okay are there any questions or comments before we we turn Zoom off. Okay. All right, so I, uh, stay safe in all the snow. Uh, if you're in New Jersey, at least there, it's really coming down like this. So I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>